Hello everyone! This puzzle is harder than it looks. I'll be using advanced strategies to solve this, so this is a great puzzle to review and learn from. It starts out really easy, and then about halfway through, I get stuck. It was graded as a hard level puzzle by Hodoku, so the easy beginning is just that, the beginning. Ultimately, I'll use the skyscraper pattern, a swordfish pattern, and force chains to solve this. Lots of good stuff here. I hope you stick around for all the fun and hopefully learn something too. Enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna start this off by scanning the numbers one through nine and putting in Snyder notation wherever I can. So let's start with the number one. There's a number one here and here. So that means I can pencil in ones here and here. And in block four, I can pencil in ones here and here. And now I have what are called locked candidates. These two ones in column two means that in block one, there can't be ones in column two, and there can't be ones in column three because of this one. So I can pencil in ones in column one here and here. Is there anything else I can do with the number one? No. Remember, I'm using Snyder notation, which means that I'm only penciling in candidates if they can go into two and only two cells in a block. If they can go into more than two cells, then I'm ignoring those candidates for now. Okay, let's move on to the number two. Here in block six, I can pencil in twos here and here. There's nothing else I can do with the number two, so let's move on to the three. Here in block eight, I can pencil in threes here and here. And let's see. Here in block four, I can pencil in threes here and here. And I don't see anywhere else I can pencil in threes using Snyder notation, so let's move on to the number four. There's a four here and a four here, so I can pencil in fours in block three here and here. And there's a four here and a four here, so I can pencil in fours in block eight here and here. And then there are two fours here, so in block four, I can pencil in fours here and here. Okay, let's move on to the number five, and there are only two fives in the grid, and I don't see any block where I can pencil in fives in just two cells. So let's move on to the number six. And we have a six here and a six here. So one of these cells has to be a six, but there's a six here in block three, so that means this cell has to be a six, so I can place a six here. And now because of this six I just placed, I can pencil in sixes in block two here and here. And now because of these two sixes in block six, I can pencil in sixes here and here. And those are locked candidates. They are locked into column eight. So now I can pencil in sixes in block nine here and here. Okay, next is the number seven and I have a seven here and a seven here, so I can pencil in sevens here and here. Okay, that's all I can do with seven. What about eight? I have an eight here and an eight here, so I can pencil in eights down here, but because of this eight, this cell has to be an eight. And now in block five, I can pencil in eights here and here. Okay, I think that does it for the eights. What about the nine? 
Okay, we have a nine here and a nine here. So the only place in block four that can be a nine is here. And now because of the Snyder notation, the four was either here or here. But since this cell is a nine, then this cell has to be the one. And then this has to be the three. And now what's missing in this block? One, two, three, four, five. The five is missing. So this has to be the five. And block four is done. Don't worry, this is gonna get harder soon. So far, this is pretty standard solving, but Snyder notation isn't gonna get me much further. So let's look for some other low-hanging fruit. And now what's missing in column two? The two and the seven, so let's pencil that in. And since we placed the four here, I can place another four down here in block seven. And now this four in block eight can no longer be a four, so this has to be the four. And now I can pencil in fours in block nine, here and here. All right, now let's go back to the number one. I placed a one here in block four. So now here in block five, I can place in ones here and here. Okay, let's see. Column three has only two empty cells, so let's see what I can place there. We're missing a three, and we're missing a five. And so we have a matching pair in block one, which means the other cells in that block can't be a three or a five, which is very helpful. Now let's see what numbers are missing in this row. We're missing a one. It can't go here. It can go here. It can't go here. So this has to be the one. And if that's the one, then this can no longer be the one. So this has to be the one. Let's see what else is missing in this row. One, two, three. We're missing a three. The three can go either here or here. Four, five, six, seven. The row is missing a seven. It can go here. And it can't go here because of this seven. So this has to be the three. And this is the seven. And we have this whole row done. So now I'm gonna start penciling in more candidates since the Snyder notation is not helping me anymore. And let's see, this row still has three empty cells. So what's missing? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're missing a six. So the six can go here and here. And I have already penciled it in here. This row is also missing a seven, so I have that penciled in already, and the row is missing an eight. It can go here and here. Where else can an eight go in this block? It can go here, and it also can go here. So I'm not seeing anything more, so I'm gonna start filling in more candidates. You can use autofill, but I like to use it, do it manually. It gets me more focused on the puzzle and then I can spot patterns better if I'm the one who filled in the candidates rather than having it filled in automatically. Okay, let's look at this row above the one I just filled in. It has a one already, so where can a two go? The two can go here. It can go here. And I already have the two here. Now what about the three? The three can go here and here. What else is this row missing? A five, it can go here or here. And it can also go here and here. And this can be a six and this can be a six. And now let's see what's left in this row. Two, this can be a two. 
this can be a 2, and this already has a 2 penciled in. 3, we have 4, 5, this row needs a 5, this can be a 5, and this can be a 5, and this can be a 5. Then we're missing an 8, 8 can be here, we have that, and here we have that, and then 9, 9 can only go here, and here. I don't see anything else, any patterns, so, oh, we have a 1 here in column 9, so that means this can't be a 1. 2, this column needs a 2, so it can go here, and here, and here. What else in column 9? 4, this can be a 4, we have that already, and this can be a 4. 5, we have a 5, 6, this can be a 6, and this can be a 6, this cannot be a 6, and this cannot be a 6, so the 6 in column 9 is either here, or here. Seven, eight, we need an eight in this column. The eight cannot go in block nine. It already has an eight. The eight can go here. We already have that. The eight can go here. And the eight can go here. And then the column is missing a nine. Block three already has a nine, so it can't go here or here. It can go here, we have that already, and it can go here. And now that I've filled in column 9 with all the possible candidates, I can see there's a naked single here. So it's the 8. There's no other number that can be placed in that cell, so this has to be an 8. And then this cell has to be a 4. And so now I can remove the 8 from this cell, and the 4 from this cell. So now there are just 3 cells left in block 3. So let's see what's missing. We're missing a 1. That can go here, here, and here. What else is still missing in block 3? We're missing a 5. This can be a 5. And this, and this. And we're missing a 7. Oh, this can't be a 4 anymore, so let's get rid of that. So we have a 1, 5, 7 triplet here. Okay, let's continue filling in the candidates manually, and then I'll look for some more patterns. So here in block 2, we have a 1. We're missing a 2. So where can the 2 go? All these cells can be a 2. And what about the 3? The 3 can also go in any of these cells. Four, five, six. Six can only go here or here. We have that already penciled in. 7, 8. 8 can go here or here. All right, let's fill in block one. We're still missing the two. So this can be a two. And this can also be a two. And this two is already filled in. And then we're missing the three and five. But that is locked into these cells here as a matching pair. So the three other cells have to be either a one or a two or a seven. So, and so these three cells are a one, two, seven broken triplet. What about these three cells down here in block seven? Well, the block is missing a two, so this can be a two, and this can be a two, and this one, three, four, five. This can't be a five because of this five, but this can be a five. And this, six, seven, seven. This, this can be a seven, right? Yes. And this, and this. Eight, nine, K, 
Can this be a nine? Yes, this can be a nine. And this. And that's it for block seven. And now I just have two more blocks to fill in with candidates, blocks eight and nine. So let's look here in block eight. One, two, we're missing a two. Can this be a two? Yes. And actually all these cells can possibly be twos. How about the number three? This can't be a three, and these can't be threes, so only these two cells can be threes. Great, four, we have five. Where can a five go? Okay, it can go in these three cells. Number six, seven, seven can go here and here and here, eight and nine. Okay, so block eight is done. And now block nine, one, where can a one go? Oh, look at that, this has to be the one. Nice. What else are we missing? Two, this can be a two. And the other twos are already penciled in, that's great. Three, we have that, okay. How about four? Oh, this is actually a four. Five, six, this can't be a six, and this can't be a six, so either one of these two cells is a six, and I have that penciled in already. Okay, seven, this can be a seven, and here, eight, nine, nine can go here, and it's already penciled in here, great. And so now I need to look around for some patterns that I might spot. And I actually can see a skyscraper on the sevens in columns two and seven. In this column, column two, the seven appears twice. And in this column, column seven, the seven appears twice. I made a lesson on the skyscraper explaining the logic behind this for this exact puzzle. So go ahead and watch that if you're not sure about the logic. But in a nutshell, one of the sevens in column two has to be true and the other false. And the same for column seven, one is true and the other is false. But at the base of the skyscraper, also only one of the sevens can be true and the other is false. So when we look at the roof of the skyscraper, since one of those has to be a seven, we can eliminate any sevens that see both the skyscraper sevens. And that lets us eliminate this seven in block one because it sees both sevens. It's in the same block as this seven and the same row as this seven, and so we can eliminate it as a candidate. And let's see, what about this seven? Does it see both? No, it's in the same block as this seven, but not in the same row as this seven, so I can't eliminate this one. But this seven in block three sees both skyscraper sevens. It's in the same row as this seven, and the same block as this one, so it can also be eliminated. And now, since we have a two seven pair in this row, I can get rid of all the remaining twos and sevens in the same row. And here, and here. And now, I'm stuck. I see the two seven matching pair here in this row and also in this column. And I'm wondering if I can use that. And I think I can play a what if game. In Sudoku, this, this is called a chain. And I'll make a lesson on that soon, but let me take a moment to define a chain. This is the definition by Hodoku. It says that a chain is simply a stream of implications that lead from a premise to a result. If a chain produces a contradiction, then the original premise is proved false 
and the candidate can be eliminated. So what I'm going to do here is make an assumption and then follow the chain of events and if I find an impossible situation, otherwise known as a contradiction, then it will prove that my assumption is false. So let's go ahead with an assumption. Let's take this cell. It can be either a two, seven, or a nine. So let's say it's a two. Then this two, seven in the same row would mean that this is a seven. And this two, seven in the same block would also be a seven. So assuming that this initial cell is a two, it forces these two cells to be sevens, right? But then we have an impossible situation in block nine, since there wouldn't be any place for a seven to go. And the block needs a seven. So that means that this initial two that I tried out can't be a two. So I can safely eliminate it. And now once I eliminate that two, the only place a two can go in that row is here. And now I can eliminate all the twos in the column and also any twos in the block. And now if I look at this block, I see another hidden single and that is the seven. There's nowhere else a seven can go but here. It can't go here because of this seven. And it can't go here because there is already a 2-7 matching pair in the row. So the 7 can only go here. And so now I can eliminate this 7. And that reveals a naked single here, the 6. And I can also get rid of the 7 here. And let's put in the 6. And that means I can get rid of these sixes and, and here. And now we have a naked single here, the eight. And that makes this a seven. And let's get rid of this. And now here in block two, there's a hidden single, the six. It can only go in block two here. And so that means this is a three, and then this is an eight. And let's get rid of this eight here, and this three here. And now we have another hidden single here, the eight. And another hidden single here in block six, the six. Remember, a hidden single means that while there are still other candidates in that cell, that number cannot go into any other cells. It can only go there. So the six can, can't go anywhere else in this block, only here. So it was a hidden single. And we have a five, six matching pair here. So I can get rid of this five. And now I'm stuck a little, this is really a hard puzzle. Okay, but here, take a look at the top row. There are only two places a two can go. And then take a look at the fourth row again. There are also only two places a two can go. And now here at the bottom, the last row again, there are only two places a two can go. So here we have a swordfish pattern on the twos. If you're not familiar with the swordfish pattern, take a look at my tutorial on the swordfish. It's lesson 11. Basically, in this case, we can use what we know about the rows that contain the twos, and then that will help us to eliminate candidates from the columns. So now, following the chain, just like we did before, if this first cell here is a two, then this is not a two, and then this is a two, and this is not a two, then this is a two, and this is not a two. Or the other way around, but either way, each of these columns has at least one two, so then all the other twos in that column can be eliminated. 
Here I have the opposing cells highlighted in pink and green. Either all the pinks are twos, in which case all the greens cannot be twos, or the other way around, all the pinks are not twos, but the greens are twos. But either way, one of those cells in columns one, five, and nine are already spoken for as twos. So then all the other twos in those columns can be eliminated. So I can eliminate this two, and I can eliminate this two in column five, and there are no twos in column nine, so there's nothing to do here. Okay, I'm going to have to play that what if game again and look for contradictions. This is really a hard puzzle. So let's look at the top row. There's a three five here, right? And that's part of a matching pair. But let's say that this cell is a three. Let's just say that, right? then that would make this cell a 5, and also this cell in the same column is also a 3, 5, so now it would have to be a 5. So if this pink cell is a 3, that would force these two green cells to be 5s, right? And then if that were true, then this cell in the same row, column 7, would not be a 5. So then we have an impossible situation or a contradiction since this column needs a five and there's nowhere left for a five to go. The five can't go in the top row since the green cell would be a five and it can't go here if this is a five and it can't go here since there's already a five in block nine. So that means only one thing that this pink cell can't be a three because it forces fives in cells that then create a contradiction. So this cell is not a three and therefore it has to be a two. Let me do that one more time. If this is a three, then this is a five and this is a five, which means this can't be the five. So where would we put a five in column seven? There's no place a five can go, so because of that contradiction, I can eliminate this three, and now this cell has to be a two. And so now this becomes a one, and this becomes a seven, and this becomes a two, and this becomes a three, and this becomes a five, this is a three, and now the puzzle is finally unraveling. Now I can eliminate the ones here. And so now this has to be the one. And this can't be a two, so this is a five. And this is the three. And then this is the two. And then this is the five. And so now I can see this is the seven. And then this is the five and this is a nine, and this is a two, and this is a six, which makes this a nine, and then this is a seven, and this has to be a two. Then this becomes a nine, five, two, seven, and now this can't be a six because of this six, so this has to be a five, and this is a six, and the puzzle is done. Wow, there were so many good strategies I had to use in this puzzle. It's a great puzzle to review and learn from. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and if you want to see some more, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.